Hello everybody, welcome back to our virtual classroom and another lesson in our trades training video series. This lesson is the first of several that covers windows. This one will get into materials, types of windows, parts and pieces, and how they work. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to our channel. By now we've loaded almost 100 videos onto YouTube so that anyone can have access to structured trades training resources. We are really trying to grow this channel and the best way for that to happen is for you, the viewer, to subscribe. Also, if you learned something from these videos, don't forget to click like. So thanks for your support. Let's get back into the lesson. Let me start our window conversation to say that we ask a lot of our windows. We have high expectations for these building components. What do we want our windows to do? We want windows to bring in visible light. We're people, we don't live in caves anymore. We like sunlight, we also like views. So a window needs to offer a view. That would be the office with a view, the home with a view, all of that. That's what a window does. It also needs to open a lot of times. This will allow ventilation or fresh air into a building. And it also, in an emergency, could work as an escape route from a building that possibly could be on fire. So how does a window do these things for us? First of all, it has to keep the weather out. It is basically a hole in the building, but we need to seal it up. So we need to expect that that window can keep the weather out, whether that's temperature to a degree or water moisture or keep our warmth or heat or cooling inside of the building as well. Windows need to be see-through and that's where the glazing or the glass comes in. This offers us that view out and also that sunlight in. Windows need to be operable. If it's not a fixed window, then we expect it to open. And this is a high expectation for something like a window. A door we're going to use all the time, maybe uh, several times a day. A window might not be open for years, and then at the moment we want it to open, it needs to open easily. This requires a lot of engineering. Now that we've made a hole in our building and we've made it able to open and close, we need to make sure that we can secure that when we don't want it open. That's another expectation for a window. Windows come in all different sizes, types, and styles, but there's a certain number of basic parts that we can talk about for any window. So let's go through our window parts. I've got a sample window here. This is uh, uh, an entire window unit. This is how they come pre-assembled. This would get installed in a building. And to start, let's talk about the frame. This is a four-sided component to the window that holds all of the moving parts. So you have a bottom, two sides, and a top. And the, in this particular window, it's all unified. All this, this is a one-piece construction for this. If you can imagine, it has to hold all of the moving parts. So we wanna make sure when we install this window frame, it is square in the opening. That's going to make all of these parts work well. Inside of the window frame will be the sash. The sash is what holds the glazing. It's another frame, but you can either have an operable sash or a fixed sash. In this case, I have one moving or operable sash, and I have one fixed sash. This one is connected to the frame permanently. Another really important part that is connected to the window frame is the flange, or you might hear it called the nail fin. This is a thin uh, part that wraps all the way around. This is what makes contact with the building. And these holes or slots that are punched in this flange are what your fasteners go through to connect all of this to the building. Most windows have a sash lock, and this is how we're going to get that window secured. So in this case, of course, if you have a fixed window, you won't have a sash lock. This only comes into play with operable or moving sashes. Here is my sash lock. It's a simple lever in this case. When I uh, turn it that direction, the window is locked. When I move it this direction, the window moves. And also one feature of a sash lock, it not only will keep this window or, or, or lock it closed, in some cases your sash lock might help complete the seal of the window to make it more weatherproof. Another window component you might see, especially if you're looking at larger windows, would be a mullion. The mullion's kind of related to the window frame. And as you can see here, it's a main structural piece. In this case, 
to divide this double unit into a left and right side. You can consider this as a fixed piece that is literally fastened to the frame. A lot of windows have a grid or a grill in them. And this is a component that sort of is a kickback to a, sort of an old fashioned window style. People don't like to see, or some people don't like to see large panes of glass. One way to divide these up is to put a pattern over that window of different material. You might see the grids, or you might hear it called a grill. Uh, you might see them done in wood. They can be done in the vinyl. They can be done in aluminum, different materials. This tends to break up that large piece of glass and make it a little more uh, uh, traditional, or I, I hate to use the word old fashioned, but it is definitely an older style of window. Back in the day, these panes uh, all would have been single uh, individual panes inside of that grid. Now we just kind of fake it. And that's what a grid or grill is. Some of them are removable. A lot of them are built into the window and they actually exist inside the glass panes as well. For operable windows, a screen is a very common component. And on this window, I have a screen on the back and these are typically easily removed and they have a very fine mesh screen on them. That's to keep bugs out when you have the window open. It's a very common thing. They're a little bit fragile, but they're very easy to install and remove. Another small but important part of a window would be the weep hole. And the weep hole should always be located on the bottom of the window and it always should be clear. If any water was to come in to the upper side of this window, these little vent holes will allow that water to escape. That keeps it from getting into the building, which can cause a lot of moisture damage. And you might be asking, how can water get into a sealed window? Well, all windows are made differently. Some wider windows have uh, bigger areas, but in this case, I can show you that this window here has, if you happen to leave the window open and it rains, then there are holes here and here that are connected to these holes. So the water, if it makes it into this area, will always escape through these weep holes. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've seen weep holes sealed up. Now, whether that's with debris from the, the surrounding area or sealed with caulk or paint, make sure these stay clear, the water needs to get out and make sure they're always on the bottom. So that covers the window unit and its components. Let's talk about some of the exterior or trim parts we would put on this window. Starting on the outside of the window, let's look at a sill. Here you see in the presentation, a photograph of the exterior side of a window. That angled ledge on the outside, we call that a sill. It is added after the window's put in and the function of a sill will be to shed water. It's going to protect the building, whether it's the siding or whatever materials are below that window. We're always trying to shed and move water away and a sill does a good job of that. It'll have some extension and it should always have that downward slope away from the window. Here you see a cutaway of a window that has a built-in sill. Notice the extension, the overhang of it, and also the downward slope away from the window or the sash. Moving back to the inside of a window, here's some typical or traditional trim that you'll find on a window, starting with the casing. The casing is three-sided. You're going to see two side pieces left and right, and you'll see a top or a head casing. These are there to blend between the wall and the window unit and give it a nice finished look, kind of like a picture frame. So just below your casings will be your stool. The technical term for this is called a stool. Most people will refer to this as a sill. As we just learned, a sill is typically on the outside and slanted. This is usually on the inside and it's flat or level. This stool kind of ends your casings and serves as kind of like a ledge on a window. Not all windows have a stool, but if you have a stool, typically there will be an apron, which is a simple trim piece below that that helps support it. So now that we've been through all the parts and pieces of windows that make them work, and even some interior and exterior trim pieces, let's go over the different types of windows that you'll find. 
Starting with our simplest type of window, we have a fixed window. This is where the window frame and the sash are fixed together. There is no operable or moving parts. A casement window is one that swings open like a door. It will be hinged from one side to the other and they typically open out. A single hung window like the one I have here today, they work vertically. So you have a moving sash, one moving sash, which is typically on the bottom, and you have a fixed sash, which would be the one on the top. If you see a double hung window, this type is like the single hung, but now we have two sashes, they both move. Next up, we have a slider. This is a very popular type of window. A slider will move side to side, and a lot of times you'll have a fixed sash and you'll have a movable sash. So think of a single hung or a double hung window type as a vertical operating window. A slider operates horizontally. An awning type window is similar to a casement. The only difference is an awning window will be hinged from the top and it will open out. A hopper is the opposite of an awning. It's usually hinged on the bottom. These, unlike an awning window, will usually open in. So there you have the basic types of windows. This will cover 99% of all the windows you will see installed. Let's go over some of the materials that we use to make our windows out of. Wood is a favorite material of anyone. The problem on the outside of a window when we're talking about wood is that this material does not stay stable. It moves around a lot, is prone to rot. It needs painting so it's high maintenance and the lifespan of this type of window is just not that long. Traditionally, we used windows or we used wood for our windows almost exclusively. As time has gone on, we've gotten away from wood and at least on the exterior of a window, and we've started to use it in very specialized ways. Vinyl windows make up 75% of all the windows installed, at least in this country. They're simple, they're inexpensive, they are reliable, and they are very weatherproof. They have some disadvantages as well. They tend to be very flexible, so we have to install them very carefully, and there is a limit to the size of the window that we can install as a vinyl window. We have to start uh, re-engineering our windows when they get larger, and we have to use some other kind of materials. Aluminum is a great material to use for windows simply because it will last a long time, it's very strong, and we're able to coat it or paint it in a lot of different color choices. So what you will typically see is an exterior uh, application for aluminum. We used to use aluminum for solid windows, but there's a problem with heat transfer and efficiency with windows. So you see more of this outside clad window situation these days. Fiberglass is another choice of material for windows. It has great insulating properties. It's really strong and it does not rot. We can mix our materials to make a better window. Here you see a lot of materials mixed. This is a cutaway of a window, so, so you see all of the interior parts. On this window, we have wood, we have fiberglass, we even have some vinyl. We can take these materials and put them where they can serve us the best. The fiberglass is on the outside edge of the window. It's going to hold up in the weather and insulate really well. We have the wood on the inside because that's what we want to look at. It makes the window look very expensive. We even have some vinyl in this window to help seal it. Here we have another example of a window cutaway. Now you're looking at a very specialized wood product called an LVL, which is laminated veneer lumber. This adds a lot of strength to the frame of this window. It also has aluminum on the outside for the weather. We also have wood on the inside because that's what we wanna see and touch. An important material in windows is the glass, or we can call that the glazing. Our glass is highly engineered and there's a lot of different things we can do to it to make it perform better for us. So let me set this picture up. This one came from the showroom we visited and this is an aluminum clad window cutaway. You see the two panes of glass in here. The reason we put two panes of glass in here is to separate the air. By having two panes of glass and putting either special gas in between them or just isolating the air in between them, we can slow the heat transfer from inside to outside. 
If you wanted to slow the heat transfer even more, you could add another pane of glass. A triple pane of glass is your highest level of efficiency in Windows, and it's your highest cost in Windows. But now we have a window that can get almost up to, say, R10. If we put special gases in between these panes of glass, I mentioned we can get more energy efficiency or we can slow the transfer of heat from one side of that window to the other. This gas could be an argon gas, xenon, or krypton. We can add specialized coatings to our windows to improve their performance. A low E coating is a very, very thin uh, mirrored light coating that will reflect certain wavelengths of light, but let visible light through. This amounts to us able to control the heat transfer either from one direction or the other in the window. There's a lot of different versions of coatings. You might see some different colors. It's typically a green cast. You might even see sort of an orange and there's different uh, levels of coating, so the different thicknesses. So that's all determined when you order the window, and it will offer you a certain level of performance. What you give up is sort of that look of the clear glass, and also you might see some of that color cast from the outside. Tempered glass is another option in a window, and code or building code dictates that we have to put tempered glass in in specific situations. That would be in bathrooms or places where a slip or a fall could put you through a window. This is a safety concern. Also in stairwells or areas where the window is too low to the ground or in situations where the window is very large. The bottom line is, is that glass is dangerous when it breaks and tempered glass will break into very small pieces that are not, uh, not that they won't cut you, but they become less dangerous than large pieces of shattered glass. Code says any window near a door should also be tempered and any pane that is over nine square feet needs to have tempered glass in it. This is a list of terms used in this presentation. And as always, I like to stress this idea of learning the language of building and using it on the job site, especially when we're talking about something technical like windows. So I hope you've learned something about windows, their types, the materials that we make them out of, and ways that we make them perform better. We will get into how to put this window in, and we'll look at some really cool examples of windows in a showroom before this series is all done. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.